Chivalry 2 has been out for over a week now, and my has had some incredible success. The medieval FPS or first person slasher has taken this genre by storm. With doubts on its initial trailer launch back in 2019, around the same time that Mordhau came out, people were skeptical. But it seems that Chivalry 2 has taken people's doubts and pushed it to the side. It has become the king of the medieval first person slasher, with massive sieges, incredible weapons, and a variety of fighting styles to be able to get your hands on and to charge into battle as the Mason Order or the Agatha Knight. But you know how the game has launched, you know what's come in the last week or so. We're talking today about the future, and at E3 Chivalry 2 revealed its roadmap for what's coming next. It revealed perhaps its biggest updates and biggest news ever, and you want to stick around for this because boy, it gets exciting. <laughs> I have to say, I was very skeptical about the longevity of this sort of game. You see, Mordhau lasted for a good year or so before the player base really started to drop off. Now, don't get me wrong, it still has a very core and loyal player base playing it to this day. But in terms of being one of the big games on Steam, and in terms of it being one of the most talked about games around the time, it's dropped off as you'd expect. Multiplayer only games do this. This is nothing different. But one of the biggest issues that I had with Mordhau was its lack of later updates. Yes, it brought in new maps and a couple new game modes but there wasn't anything massive and it looks like Chivalry 2 is really revealing something big to try and keep it alive for as long as possible. First of all is the biggest news and this is different eras that they're going to be focusing on within the medieval period. Currently and in the past it's been focused on the early medieval period. Sword slashing, maces, all that sort of thing but we're going into the high medieval period soon. They're going to be focusing on a later time during this era of knights and weaponry, cavalry and and siege engines and it's going to get bigger and better with more refined armors and weapons that of course you can customize and play around with and test out on the battlefield. This is something really exciting because I wasn't expecting a game like Chivalry 2 to go that big. I was expecting additional maps of course new weapons but focusing on whole new and different time periods is one thing trying to fill out the right amount of content for just that early medieval period that's been focused on in the past but spanning early all the way through to late medieval trying to get enough content for that is going to be a challenge so it's going to be interesting to see how they combat that and how they approach these certain obstacles that they're putting, well, really in their own way. However, if it pays off, this is going to be one of the biggest first-person medieval slasher games that we've ever had. This is going to be taking it to next level. And we knew that Chivalry 2 was going to be focusing on that with the bigger maps and the bigger scale battles, the more bloody, more hectic, more crazy events that go on within your Chivalry 2 games compared to something like Mordhau. But this is going to the next level in terms of expanding the game itself. We've had the first look of one of the new maps that's going to be moving towards this newer medieval era and this is Galancourt. You can see docks with ships in them. They're trying to attack this massive beautiful city. You can see the cathedral looks gorgeous. The architecture and the work that's been put into this is next level. You start off as the attackers in the ships and you have to move your way into the docks fighting over the walls into the city and eventually into the cathedral and my I cannot wait to get my hands on this. Those ships by the way they can be destroyed by the defenders. If you need to, blow them up. Make sure they stop spawning men there and win the day for yourself. Not only that, but we've had so many more looks at some of the new weapons that are going to be coming out and just the style and the fidelity that they have on each of these individual weapons looks beautiful. And you can really see the inspiration when they're talking about going into later medieval. This is shown within the weapons and the maps that we've seen. It's much higher, more upper class medieval. People are richer. The church is really taking over and is a very wealthy state here but the battles are still raging on. The blood is still flying, the limbs are still getting chopped off, and the heads are still rolling. That is not going to change, but it's going to be looking at a more higher society, rather than what we've seen in Chivalry 2 as it launched, where there's been, yeah, castles as well, and keeps of fighting in, but mostly down in the dirt, fighting in villages against peasants, rather than these massive cities, which is going to be a really new terrain and experience for, I think, many Chivalry players. One of the cool new things that they mentioned is new combat. They didn't really specifically 
specifically say whether it's going to be a complete overhaul of the combat, but they said they're going to try and add in some new cool things, maybe animations, but also maybe some more advanced fighting styles that players can try out during the game. Moreover, just to wrap this off in one nice tight bundle, they mentioned at E3 that Chivalry 2 is going to eventually become more than double the size it is already completely for free. I was so happy to see this. And judging by the comments, I think a lot of other people were as well because there were worries, honestly. When I saw Shivery 2's launch, I was very excited. I'd played the alphas and the testing and the betas and the open betas as well. I played it so much and when it launched, it brought in some cool new maps and some cool game modes. You know, you got to play as some peasants and you survive the onslaught from the enemy attacking armies that'd be stealing your gold. And it was a lot of fun, but I did have that worry in the back of my mind that this was a game that would be fun for a few weeks and then it would drop off. But the amount of content that coming is putting that thought to the side, at least for now. As well as talking about how it's going to be more than double the size for no additional cost. You see, when Shivery 2 came out on Epic Games and then it brought out microtransactions as well, it worried me somewhat because it was all the trappings of a company that really just wanted to get a lot of money from the game rather than create a decent game. And that might have seen an unfair assumption at the start and it seems it has been that way. They're not hiding content behind closed doors and whilst I won't really ever agree with even cosmetic microtransactions because you're not getting the full game there. They're hiding some cosmetics behind closed doors that you have to pay for, which I'd rather get the full game if I'm buying it, wouldn't you? But it seems like in terms of actual content with maps and weapons, things that really actually affect the game, they're putting it all out there. And they're putting it all out there, not just for the people that pay the top dollar, but for everybody. And I think that is so important. Now, I think it's so important that games come out that are really for everyone. And that sounds like the most communist point of view ever. Jesus, what have I done? Stop, what, what have I done? However, it's it's been such a hard road for games in the late years and so because everyone's bringing out something new but they're hiding half the game behind a paywall and I'm so happy that Shivery 2 have gone completely the other way. Whether you enjoy it more than Mordhau or not you can at least appreciate what they're trying to do. This looks like a passion project more than anything and I had my doubts at the start. Overall I think Shivery 2 has an incredibly bright future. I think the content that they revealed at E3 is something quite special. I think it's going to bring way more opportunities to everybody playing it is going to bring way more maps and way more time periods. You know, they're going to late medieval, but maybe they can explore more. I know keeping within those medieval boundaries. However, there's so much to explore that hasn't really been explored in many games before. The word medieval basically means nothing these days. It's such a wide span of time going over hundreds of years, but it seems to all be focused around similar points. Maybe Shivery 2 can be that game that breaks out of that mold. Maybe they can be the game that explores parts of the medieval world that hadn't really been explored before in other games like Mountain Blade and Mordhau and Kingdom Come Deliverance. Maybe we can get this within these updates. But please let me know what you think. What do you think about the announcements at E3 and what are you most looking forward to in the future? Please leave your comments down below and I'll be sure to check up on them. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. And if you haven't already, go and check out my podcast on the Resonant Deep Dive channel. It's a new channel that I'm starting where there's going to be some exciting stuff. It's starting shows, interviewing YouTubers, talking about YouTube life and everything of the above. So click the link in the description to go and subscribe to that. But until then, I will see you in the next one.